Welcome back to One Touch, Three Lenses. This is the third in a video series that takes apart a single Epe touch from the viewpoint of technique, tactics, and timing. Our touch this time is more recent than the previous two, coming from the women's Epe final at the 2020 Budapest Grand Prix, between Song Sara of South Korea and Alexandre Louis-Marie of France. Song is low to the ground, left-handed, and ready to pick the hand and pop the toe with her French grip and quick feet. Louis-Marie has a disciplined point, a deep attack and towers over Song at six foot one. Here's the touch we're looking at. On the replay, you can see that this action has a clear timeline. One, two, three. And one more time. Let's start with our technical lens and describe what happens. Song is the one who initiates the whole action by making a half step prep into distance. That's an important note because we see the defender taking an active role in constructing the right moment. Then as Louis Marie attacks into the preparation, Song makes a deep parry six and a repost to the torso. Alexandre Louis Marie makes a lunge of sorts, but pretty much immediately realizes she's fallen into a trap. She attempts to escape by forward recovering and sweeping for the blade in eight, but the damage is done. Let's talk about Song's parry. This does play a bit against type, as French grip fencers in general, and Song in particular, are more prone to defend with a counterattack. However, with proper form, anyone can take a parry, and there might even be a surprise factor when a typical counterattacker throws out a strong blade action. You can see that Song captures the weak part of Louis Marie's blade with the strong part of hers, which gives her all the leverage needed to overpower the stronger fencer's blade. The other thing you'll notice is that this parry is huge. The general rule of thumb is that a parry should be as small as possible, while still capturing or deflecting the blade, but that could still mean that a big parry is required. A big parry is a function of close distance, meaning that closer distances both require and cause larger parries. Oftentimes I hear newer fencers blame a missed touch on too big of a parry, when the real issue was too close of distance. In the case of Song and Louis Marie, the parry happens at the last possible second at very close distance, which mandates a giant parry. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, because the close distance plays a critical role in the timing of this touch, as we'll see. Let's look next at the prep from Song. I'll call your attention to two important details here. First, notice how Song half extends her arm towards the leg, making the prep into something of a feint. We'll see in a bit why that particular feint is so effective at drawing an attack from Louis Marie. Second, look how Song transfers her weight hard to the front foot on the prep, ready to change direction and check backwards. This is telling because the front foot has to be on the ground in order to propel oneself backwards, and the back foot being in the air prevents Song from lunging or advancing further. It shows that the prep was intended to invite and run away, because Song more or less gives up her ability to attack in favor of changing direction quickly. Let's switch to our tactical lens, but before we discuss our touch, let's say a few things about the role of tactical thinking in general. A common piece of fencing advice is to find your opponent's mistakes and turn them into opportunities. This is sound advice, but it can sometimes lead to overly passive fencing. At the beginner level, it's perfectly reasonable to wait for your opponent to take too large a step, too wide a parry, or make an attack from too far out of distance, and punish that mistake. These mistakes happen often enough, and it is important to recognize them. At higher levels of fencing, mistakes still happen, but they aren't offered up as easily. Instead of waiting and hoping for the opponent to make an unforced error, the best fencers seek to actively create an opportunity by exploiting the opponent's tactical thought. In other words, tactics have to do with using the opponent's fencing intelligence against them. If your game is based entirely on waiting to punish stupid mistakes, this won't scale well against fencers who are smarter, tougher, and more disciplined. A complete fencing game works against fencers who are choosing actions for good reasons, and doesn't rely on unforced errors. On our touch, Song uses her prep to deceive Louis Marie on both a tactical and timing level, and create the critical opportunity to score. If you've been following along with this series, you'll notice that a prep has been central to every touch we've looked at. That's no accident. A prep into distance is the fundamental building block of creative, proactive fencing. It can be used to set up a lunge or a flesh, draw an attack from the opponent, test the opponent's reaction, or create a false sense of security around a given action. In this case, the prep is used to mimic a lunge to the toe, which leads Louis Marie to commit to an attack. A good fencing bout is a living, breathing thing. Fencers are constantly called upon to adapt to changing circumstances in the bout, and to learn from tactical mistakes on the fly. 
Beginner fencers may require many touches, or even a whole bout, to recognize an opponent's tactic and make adjustments. Of course, the sooner you can adapt to the tactical situation, the better. High-level fencers often change their tactics as frequently as every touch, but this requires a good understanding of fencing tactics, a solid arsenal of skills, and mental flexibility. As in our last two videos, it's hard to see the whole tactical picture from a single touch, so let's rewind a bit and see how Song's parry repost is the culmination of a tactical progression. Two touches earlier, Song legitimately went for the toe, and was punished by a straight flash from Louis Marie. This puts ideas in the minds of both fencers. Louis Marie, who has the lead and the superior reach, can let Song search for a touch and find this kind of moment again. Song, who has the burden to score, has seen both the danger of going straight and Louis Marie's willingness to attack into her prep. On the next touch, she baits Louis Marie with a short tease into distance and keeps her point ready to counterattack a closer target, the arm. This leads to a battle of timing. Song is still looking to draw an attack, and Louis Marie is waiting to see more commitment from Song before she goes again. Ultimately, Song wins the battle of timing with the help of a tactical change. On our touch, Song unexpectedly switches from a counterattack to a parry repost. Because a parry can happen at a later moment than a counterattack, this tactical switch allows Song to prep deeper into distance and present an even more enticing invitation. And it works. Before moving on, I'll point out that attacking the toe and making a prep defense have a strong symbiotic relationship. The biggest danger when attacking the toe is an attack from the opponent. So a successful hit, or even an unsuccessful attempt to the toe, may put the opponent in mind of attacking. This can dial up their willingness to attack into the attack, and make them more susceptible to biting on an invitation feint to the toe. This relationship also works in reverse. If a fencer has been burned one too many times by attacking into a low prep and finding a ready defense, they might dial down their willingness to attack or counterattack in preparation, which in turn reopens the possibility of a straight attack to the toe. Let's turn to the role of timing. In the last two videos, I talked about three moments to attack, and this touch is a clear example of an attack in foot tempo from Louis Marie. However, I'm planning a separate video that goes into detail on all three moments to go, so let's leave that to the side for now. This time, I want to examine the role of timing both in general and as a function of distance in the bout. So what is the importance of timing? Well, for one, timing can make the difference when the tactic is agreed upon by both fencers. For example, imagine that one fencer is planning to prep into distance and flesh to the chest, while the other fencer is waiting until after the prep comes to make parry repost. These are both valid ideas, so tactically, neither fencer is in the wrong. Imagine further that each fencer knows what the other wants to do. Who will score? It comes down to which fencer better judges the timing. If the attacker launches a flesh at a moment in space and time, where the defender lacks the time to parry, the attacker will score. But if the defender maintains readiness and distance and reads the timing correctly, the attack will arrive slowly enough to allow a parry. A second way that timing matters is in judging the opponent's options and intentions. Fencers are constantly trying to assess what the opponent might do next, and a good read of timing can filter out several possibilities. For instance, if a fencer is 10 feet away from me, I'm not especially concerned that their straight flesh could outspeed my parry. That means I can more or less ignore that possibility, freeing up valuable brain space to anticipate more realistic scenarios, like a compound attack. Conversely, if the opponent does prepare into a dangerous distance, a fencer with a good sense of timing is instantly on red alert, and will take corrective action like a retreat or a preemptive attack, because the opponent's attack could outspeed any sort of defense otherwise. Understanding the relationship between timing and distance allows a fencer to better detect both dangerous threats and valuable opportunities, and like anything, this skill is developed through experience. Let's take it back to our touch and examine the timing here as a function of distance. Earlier, we talked about a tactical progression, but we can also see a progression here in timing. Let's go back to Louis Marie's last touch, where Song goes for the toe. Right before the touch, this is the setup. We know that Song is about to go for the toe, and Louis Marie is about to flesh to the shoulder, so we can compare the distance between each fencer's point and her intended target. In order to hit the toe cleanly, Song's point has to travel the farther distance, faster than Louis Marie's point can travel the shorter distance. That's an uphill battle, but it's not impossible. Song is the faster of the two fencers, and she has the advantage of going first. However, on this touch, Louis Marie anticipates the attack, so the two start at more or less the same moment, and the timing favors Louis Marie. Now on the next touch, 
Song changes the timing by prepping short and counterattacking the arm instead of committing to a toe touch. Here's the setup, and here's the relative distance. By attacking a short target, Song is able to achieve a more favorable moment to go straight than Louis Marie, despite having less reach. This time, the timing favors Song, and she scores a clean touch. This is where it gets good. Louis Marie knows she botched the timing on the last one, but the idea of attacking into Song's prep has already proven to be effective if she can just find the moment again. Now, here's the setup right before our touch. It's almost an exact replica of Louis Marie's last touch. If Song goes to the toe again, it's likely that history will repeat itself, as the timing and the distance seem to favor Louis Marie. But in a thousand IQ move, Song feints to the toe instead and pulls a deep parry repost as the attack arrives. The reason this is so good is because Song is drawing from both of the last touches to deceive the timing here. After losing the timing battle on her attack to the toe, Song adapted once by changing the timing, and then offered the same purposefully bad timing to draw an attack, before changing her tactic to score an unexpected touch. And that's all for now. This video took me a little longer than I planned. I really went down the rabbit hole with some of the graphics, but hopefully they helped illuminate some of the concepts I talked about. I'm planning to make at least five videos in this series, but the next thing I put out might be a separate video on the topic of timing. Either way, thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.